if everybody can sit down, we can start. So I've taken upon me the, the big task of trying to tell you everything about Wikimedia chapters that there is. <laughs> However, that is a little bit impossible. So what I've tried to do is uh, give you just a quite random selection where I've given all the chapters the chance to give some input and I've tried to make some kind of an overview of that, of several cool projects which are swirling around in the Wikimedia world. And I hope that that way you can both get an overview of what chapters are actually doing, but also what you could get some inspiration out of it. And um, this is in no way meant to be incomplete. So, when we go back a few Wikimanias in history, this was, the pic this was what w chapters looked like in, uh, when Wikimedia was in Frankfurt. And if you just go through time, you see that the chapters are slowly expanding into in Europe. And the first chapter in Taiwan and in Hong Kong appear. And then suddenly, the whole world starts to turn slowly blue. And this is where we are now, and this is where we are going very soon. There are a few more chapters going to be recognized probably very soon. And I hope that uh, all these chapters can continue to do cool projects. So I, I've divided these projects into uh, some, kind of, um, some kind of groups to give it a little bit of consistency because they are really all over the place. Um, so let's first start with like the simplest type of projects you can basically imagine, the meetups, uh, which can also become quite complicated. So in Denmark, uh, they are organizing um, every first Wednesday of the month, for example, um, local meetups, uh, and that means that you have a very regular schedule and you can meet every time, and it's a very low threshold for people to actually participate in it. Um, they usually pick an interesting location, museum, library, or anything. Um, so you can actually, this is actually very scalable all over the world, so it might be interesting. In the Philippines, they are currently starting a new, uh, a new interesting idea to also um, get some kind of outsiders into the meetings. Um, they have a coffee meeting every now and then, and uh, I don't think it's every month yet, but uh, they try to make it regular. And it's basically for we comedians and friends, uh, people from other open source technologies, uh, and they have some discussion, and uh, apparently last time they had some 20 participants, which is already a quite nice uh, amount of people to have a meeting with. Um, because the local Wikimedians are not so fond of meetings, they find it very interesting to get more people from the outside in to actually have some kind of a critical mass there. Around the 10-year Wikipedia, there have happened so many events. So I'm just going to pick out a few of them, which, are, uh, which have been submitted by some of the chapters. And, um, the first of them, uh, which I found very interesting, was in the Czech Republic, where they had um, a concert with public domain music. <laughs> so this, I mean, public domain, it means there is no copyright, so you can actually make recordings, and as, as I understand, they are going to put them on commons if they are not there yet. So that means that we can actually have some really nice sound files there. In uh, Taiwan, um, you may remember them from uh, Wikimania 2007, a long time ago. Um, they are also having regular meetups, and uh, this is the, the event they organized in the summer of 2011, so that's actually happening, uh, that actually happened last month, uh, where they tried to organize um, some kind of a workshop, but then really for novice users, so really new users in, with Wikipedia 10 as an excuse, basically. So they had a full day with different workshops. They started off with uh, what is reliability, how does Wikipedia work, and then went more into how can you write, a write how can you actually write an article, and they combined that with a contest. So at the end of the day, everybody would have written an article in a team, and they could have helped each other, and that way um, they actually were involved. Uh, by the way, on the bottom, uh, this presentation, I will put it on the Wikimania Wiki. On the bottom, you will always find a link 
to a page with more information. I do not know everything, so you can try to ask me, but most likely I will not have the answers. Um, and these pages are often in local languages, but Google Translate works. In uh, France, they had really an interesting project uh, because we are used to um, articles on a screen and they actually tried to put it more into a real life. So they printed out, well, printed, uh, they, they put the articles on uh, cardboards and they actually put them on the street. In Rennes, in France, um, they celebrated the 10th anniversary of Wikipedia that way and they tried uh, to involve people uh, like really make them understand like yes this is really about this thing here uh, and the picture as you can see on the uh, on the photo here as well in the background uh, it has been replaced by a live feed of the actual stuff <laughs> and you don't need fancy screens for that it's just making a hole in it and you can see it <laughs> low-tech technology um, it's also very nice because it's, it's local and it's, that is actually something that works all over the world. If you go local, people are more interested. Um, I wanted to show you some, um, this is going, this, these are a little bit more complicated things, but uh, there are conferences all over the world and they are being organized in all kinds of ways. And um, for example, this is in the Philippines, they have organized a Wikicom, very um, unusual name. And, uh, well, this is the, the group of people uh, that were present. And uh, it, it's basically a one-day conference. It's a simple type of conference you can imagine. Uh, you could probably execute that also everywhere in the world. Um, and it's all about sharing knowledge, having discussions, um, getting a better understanding of who you are, who the other people are, uh, what you can do, uh, getting inspiration. It's not as big as Wikimania, of course, uh, which I wouldn't call a conference almost, but it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a bit more local, it works uh, differently. But they combined it with a truth in numbers screening. Truth in numbers, you may remember uh, the movie that was being taped in 2006 to 2008. Um, you may have encountered them even if you are uh, one of the dinosaurs in the room. Um, and they, have, uh, they also combine it with a general meeting. So if you combine these events together, you can actually get a higher participation. And that way, uh, it's interesting for more people than just the people who like to listen to lectures and fall asleep in halfway. Um, but also in New York, for example, they had this, um, it's a different type of conference. Uh, they had really an, uh, an unconference, as they say, they call it. It's already their second, um, they try to do it every year. And it's, it's, it has been almost a year ago, so I, I guess, I'm not sure if there's someone from New York here that there will be another one uh, very, very soon. Uh, and they had some interesting keynotes, uh, more than 120 participants, which is really, really cool for uh, such a conference. But what is most interesting here is that they had a lot of open space. You see all these cards on the wall? That's actually topics people put up, like I want to discuss this, I want to discuss this, and they, they rearrange the schedule like on, during the conference. So we all got these wonderful uh, schedules. Uh, they didn't have them, they had to walk to the low-tech wall and, uh, well, figure it out themselves. But it also leaves a lot of space because if you enter there and you find out during a discussion, like, yeah, but actually this topic is totally missing and it's very important. You can just edit the, the schedule and uh, no problem. Harel will not kill you in that case. Um, in Australia, they also had uh, some kind, well, I'm not sure if you can call it a conference, it's a week academy. Um, they had a meeting, uh, but with more outsiders. So they, this was really aimed to outsiders. It was not very big, what 20 participants. But as you maybe may know, uh, Australia is a big place and um, traveling can be uh, very long. So if you make it more local, people are more likely to come for some weird reason. It's cheaper or something. And um, they tried to explain to these people from cultural heritage institutions um, how they can add information to Wikipedia. So they can add it themselves, but also they can understand it better, and that way they can um, better cooperate and participate in our movement. 
It was uh, supported by the State University of Queensland. Um, always nice when you, if you're organizing it that you put the name of another big organization which is trusted, unlike Wikipedia. Um, to, uh, if you put that on your uh, event, uh, that way more people are uh, likely to participate. If, if we can, let, let's, I would like to put suggestion, uh, questions in the end, because otherwise I'm afraid Matthias will uh, be very angry. Um, the US also organized another conference, which is uh, totally different from the 120 people conference we just, uh, I just described. Um, it's, as you see, the, the audience is a bit smaller. Well, people are still big sometimes, but it's a smaller audience. And um, it's, it's more uh, an international conference. Uh, they invited the GLAM experts, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, cultural heritage institutions, from all over the world, uh, Wikipedians, Wikimedians, uh, and they were trying to uh, get together and really explain to each other what they're doing, what are the best practices, uh, where to go, and where not to go. It was in May 2011, and it's not too long ago, but already a lot of uh, good initiatives came forth from that. Um, it was hosted by the New York Public Library, you see again, nice organization. And uh, it was funded through a Wikimedia Foundation grant, uh, which is an interesting thing to note, uh, to note as well, if you want to organize something big and it's really interesting, and you don't have the funds for it, the Wikimedia Foundation can help you with these funds. Um, so just, um, I think Asaf is, run is running around here somewhere in the conference, so just jump on his neck and get more information from him. I'm sure he was happy to provide it. Um, a lot of projects have been done around PR, public relations, outreach, as uh, we also can call it. And uh, I've picked out again some of them because they are really all over the place. And um, for example, in Hong Kong, they have Chinese New Year there, so it's not on January 1st, of course. And um, they, they, they have these huge football courts full, filled with stalls organizations presenting themselves, and um, Wikimedia Hong Kong was one of them. So it's, it's a good opportunity for people to drop by and say, hey, what is this weird thing, Wikimedia? Are you not violating the trademark of Wikipedia? And um, that way, um, they can actually uh, get in touch with people. It's, um, and you see these similar events on all kinds of book fairs. I think Wikimedia Czech did something similar uh, in book fairs. Uh, and other, also other chapters. Um, but they also sold a lot of merchandise, which is also a nice way to get in touch with people. It depends a bit on the country, but in some countries, people are really, uh, they want to buy something of you, and they put it in their home, and well, they see it every time. In Italy, um, they did some outreach through videos. They made screencasts. I cannot start it here right now, unfortunately. But um, what, what they do is they, they change the, um, they, they just walk you through how Wikipedia works. Um, there is this guy in the left, and he keeps talking during the video, even if the screen doesn't move, so you see his, his mouth going up and down. I'm not sure. Who saw the video? Can I see some? Oh, not so many. Okay, just follow the link down there, and please go watch it if you haven't seen it. It's really great. They have... Indeed. It's, it's, and they have many translations available. Um, they already have three editions, so it's not just about Wikipedia. It's about Wikimedia Commons as well, Wikisource, and I think it's, uh, there are more editions coming up, right? Wikiquote is the next. Wikiquote, well, that's wonderful. Um, well, I think you, you'll get to the 10 at some point, and then you just do the cycle all over again. No, you do a series on Wikipedia, for instance, 10 videos on various aspects. Okay, good. We, we get more information about Wikiquote soon by, from Italy, by the way. Um, Macau has been doing um, this wonderful poster. I love it. Just get unattached from Wikipedia. I'm not sure how that recruits more users. Um, <laughs> get rid of the addiction. But it's, it's, it's a wonderful poster. I love it. The design is great. Um, but they try to get more Wikipedians uh, by just having a small gathering, a tea party, I think they call it. And, um, well, yeah, <laughs> different ty type of tea party. They don't have the historical connotations. Um, 
And uh, that way, it's, it's a very low threshold situation for people to just come in and ask like, yes, yeah, so who is being paid here in the room? And then they can just um, get more information. People still think that it's all, uh, it's all paid authors. So they share information and uh, it's coming up in August. And as I heard, they will give a full summary of Wikimania. I hope they cast it on video because I'd love to see how they summarize the whole conference in one meeting. Um, and it's also a good way to actually help people. Like I've been trying to editing and I cannot find this template. Well, you can just help them. Um, so Italy, well, as, like I said, the wiki quote, they are really fond of that. So well, they, they made a bot and um, the, the, it's the, their Twitter bot and they have a quote of the day every day. Um, so it's, it's not much work, but it's actually uh, really nice because it's, um, it, it gives people a way to get in touch with you if they see a message of you once a day. And actually these quotes are really interesting if you just, um, if you just watch them. And for those who are interested in it, I put the translation below. So definitely follow them on Twitter. It's uh, IT Wiki Quotes on Twitter. And Macedonia has also been working on social networks. And um, yeah, they're a bit more flexible than that. And uh, they have a big presence on, on Twitter and Facebook and they try to really get Wikipedia there. And um, they have even a side notice on Wikipedia, which is inviting people, I cannot pronounce this, but um, they basically ask people to follow Wikipedia on Twitter and Facebook. They mention it explicitly. And that way people immediately recognize it like a button they can click on. And it's again, very low threshold, very easy to participate. And it might not be accepted in some other communities, but apparently in their community it's totally fine. Everybody likes it. So I think it's a wonderful initiative that way. So if you want to link, I didn't put it there. If you want to link, just go to the Macedonian Wikipedia and well, it's in the site notice. So some of the chapters are really working on distributing the content. It's wonderful that we all create this stuff. Uh, we write articles, but if nobody reads it, it's quite useless. So um, in Israel, they have been working together with um, the Africa Center and they have been trying to uh, push the content towards areas in Africa where there is no cheap internet available. So they have this project in, in Cameroon and uh, they were going to ship some computers there and they had Linux on them and all kind of open source software. Um, and what they did is together with Wikimedia France and uh, Wikimedia Switzerland, they um, made a cooperation and they put offline Wikipedia there. And as I understood, the, the participation of the local people in the um, computer room is actually quite high thanks to that because they really th find this kind of content useful. It may not be their mother tongue, but it is the kind of the academic language. It's the, it's the, uh, the, the transaction language basically of the region. So they are, they are very well able to speak French and um, Yes, they, they can actually use the content to prepare their lessons. Teachers use it. Uh, people use it for all kinds of different stuff uh, which we wouldn't think of. We are warning students like do not use Wikipedia. All they have is Wikipedia. It's, uh, it's wonderful. In the UK they are doing some, I mean, going from low tech to high tech. Um, in the UK they are working on QRpedia and um, they try to sticker uh, the Wikipedia bowl um, with all kind of codes. They, it's, I'm not sure who is familiar with the QR code. It's a scannable URL. So you, put your, you take your mobile phone, you make a photo, if you have a more advanced mobile phone than I have. And um, you, you are led to the website. And normally that's just one URL. So what happens here is you are being sent to a website which gives you the Wikipedia article in the language of your mobile phone settings. So if your mobile phone is in French, it doesn't matter that you're in England, you still get the French Wikipedia article. And that's actually wonderful. They are doing a, a, a pilot right now in Derby. And um, if you're a tourist there, it doesn't matter from which country you are, you can just use the same QR code. Can you imagine if you have an article which is translated in 270 
languages. And you have to put 270 QR codes there. I mean, it's a big zebra. And a lot of chapters are also cooperating with um, cultural partners, cultural heritage institutions, GLAM, um, all kind of uh, terminologies used for that. And um, I think it's interesting to light out a few. Uh, a lot of them have their own sessions here. A lot of them were already discussed yesterday. So if you want to know more about that, too bad you should have been there yesterday. Um, but a few interesting ones are, um, for example, in Australia, where they cooperated with the State Library of Queensland. They are very active in Queensland. And um, they had an image donation of 50,000 images, which, is, which are historically relevant. They use a lot of metadata. So they are actually um, being used in Wikipedia that way. And um, that way you get an interesting loop. Um, if you want to know more details about GLAM and why it's useful, just uh, Liam Wyatt is walking around here. He's the guy with the big brown beard. Uh, hard to miss. <laughs> well, it's brown, not black. And in Sweden, they are cooperating with the Nordic Museum. Um, it's, a, it, it's a bit smaller donation, but it's uh, historically even more relevant, I understand. Uh, for example, this is the crown prince of Sweden at some point, and uh, if you have this kind of images, it's easy to uh, populate articles with, uh, with clear images. An image just says still more than 1,000 words. And a cooperation I found very interesting was um, uh, in Portugal, where they acquired a donation of 1,000 of, oh no, of the whole red list of the IUCN. Uh, that's the organization who cares about uh, threatened wildlife. So all these animals where only 10 or 20 are left, they are put on, well, that's I think even the blacklist, but if, if an animal is, um, is almost getting extinct, they get on a red list, they get protected. And that means that they have a lot of statistical data. They have a lot of data. Um, there are so many animals in this region of the world, so many animals there, so many animals there. And all this spatial data has been made available. And you can create wonderful maps out of it for Wikipedia. And I think it uh, really adds something that you otherwise can very hardly get. This is typically something. We cannot send a crew of Wikipedians into the jungle to counter tigers. I mean, we can, but it would reduce Wikimania participation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pictures, but you cannot count them. That's the problem. Because after the first one, you're gone, so. Now, in Argentina, they have been cooperating with the radio and television of Argentina. And um, I think this is also, well, Everything here is interesting, so it's, it's getting a bit, um, a bit overdone. But um, the archive uh, material they have is, um, is really nice uh, because it's very encyclopedic uh, content. And what they have gotten in release is videos. And uh, we have not so many videos on Wikimedia Commons. We have not so many videos in Wikipedia articles. And they have gotten, so far, 25 video excerpts um, where they had small uh, parts of a speech and the speech itself was historically relevant. So it's not random speeches from parliament which are boring and everybody falls asleep, but it's actually something that has a historical significance. And um, obviously it has then its own uh, article in uh, article context. Uh, in the UK they had this uh, interesting backstage pass, which means that you get a special treatment in a museum because you're a group of Wikipedians. Um, it was organized by Liam Wyatt. He has organized some other interesting uh, things in the British Museum, so I'm just going to outline two of them. Um, you take a look behind the screens and uh, you get to see stuff that otherwise you wouldn't see. That means that you're really interested, uh, you get more people, and they get involved and encouraged uh, with the museum. In France, they also have a Wikipedian in residence right now. Um, and they are, um, well, it, it's, it's a better view if I'm, if I'm honest. He's next to you. He can probably tell you much more about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like on the other side of the lake, right? Um, no, the, the idea of this um, residency was that uh, the resident would try to really facilitate people. 
Um, the same goes for the British Museum, I guess. Um, it's not the idea that the person goes there, sits in the library all day and write articles. The idea is to, to bridge between the community and the local organization and give people access as well to the content of that organization. Because they have lots of stuff there, they have uh, paintings, they have uh, libraries, etc. Uh, the results that I found so far was uh, like 290 articles and 1800 images, uh, which may not sound very much, but actually it's quite a lot because it's high quality content. Um, in Poland, they had like an overarching project for Glam uh, because they were trying to. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there are probably a lot of mistakes here, so please forgive me because it's so, so many different languages. Uh, we have the luxury of Wikimedia to have many, many content donations. Many, many museums are releasing their content nowadays, and it would be really nice to recognize uh, these museums for that. So in Poland, they, um, they gave this community award um, in, in several categories, and they try to appreciate the museum which is having the most interesting content donation. They have this nice little statue you see here uh, with the gentleman. I'm not sure. You, who is the organization here? Uh, uh, this, 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 this guy is doing photos with famous people in Poland. And he put about 2,000 photos of famous people from Poland. Uh, ah, wonderful. I'm really looking forward to the next, uh, which is going to be, I think, next month. So um, yeah. I'm really looking forward to the next uh, celebration of that. Okay, institutions work harder because this is really something nice to win. Uh, in education, also a lot is happening. Um, Frank Schuleburg has, of course, uh, in the foundation worked a lot on that field, and other people as well. Um, but here in Argentina, for example, they work together with the, um, the Ministry of Education and uh, in the Buenos Aires province, um, which I've been told is like half Argentina or something uh, on population. And they, they created this, um, this booklet, uh, which you see in the background as well. Um, which is all about Wikipedia. And they try to explain to people what is Wikipedia, and you can actually use it in education. And um, while well, more collaborations are ongoing, um, they, are, they are working together with uh, the ministry in many fields. And if you want to know more about it, then at 12 o'clock, go to the Arbel room, and you can hear all about it. In Germany, they had the Schul project. I think they already, um, I'm not sure if I pronounced it correctly, but um, they, are, they told yesterday more about that, so if you want to know more about it, you're too late. You have to find an employee of Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, and it's, it's a lot of trainings um, of volunteers, and the volunteers then give the workshop. So it's the train the trainer concept. And that means that it makes it all really scalable. They have 20 volunteers who got a training, and these 20 volunteers then get, and again, uh, together uh, made, 40, made a workshop on 40 schools. And it's something that's going to grow over the years because once you have these volunteers, they can do it again next year and next year and next year. Um, so it's a really a scalable program and um, it looks really interesting. In uh, Estonia, they did something a little bit similar. Um, they gave these lectures on uh, 15 high schools and um, it was not according to the training the trainer pr concept, but it was uh, several people within Estonia who were really interested in this. And they gave lectures about how you use Wikipedia, how do you contribute to Wikipedia as part of the curriculum, and they tried to help the educators in that. In uh, Macedonia, they were also giving lectures um, about um, how Wikipedia works, why it works, uh, who works it. And um, it, it, this is a little bit, uh, it's, it's also one to two hour uh, seminars. And they try to target the students and pupils on it and uh, make them become active, really. It's, so it's not so much about um, just, well, telling them what it is and then, okay, that was your lesson of today, now have fun at lunch. 
but really try to set the next step and um, guide them in that. In Canada, they have uh, a, a different approach in it. Um, they try to cover more medical topics um, and uh, they try to have some kind of a contest uh, among students and the best students would get a $1,000 Canadian dollar uh, scholarship and uh, to be able to write more articles even. Uh, this was uh, paid for by one of the board members, um, so not even, not by the chapter itself. And uh, they hope to get more medical content that way by paying people to actually do it and make time for it. In uh, Hong Kong, they have this new, uh, this obligatory class, um, liberal studies. And um, it's, it's all about how do you find information and how do you use it. And the first word that pops in our mind is, of course, Wikipedia then. So what they did is they produced a lesson package for that. And uh, it's specifically targeted to this, um, this group of people, this group of lessons. And, uh, but they do not only explain Wikipedia. They explain the internet in general, how do you get co uh, content, how do you find information, how do you use it, um, what rules do you have to follow. And uh, there is apparently more coming up, so hopefully next year um, this will be even uh, more interesting. In Switzerland, they try to um, have the, the third generation, the third age, to um, be more involved in Wikipedia and uh, not sit on a couch like that. I couldn't find any... I couldn't find any images on Wikipedia of elderly people behind a computer, so I had to take the opposite. Um, so it's a European collaboration. It's not just Wikimedia Switzerland. It's also Wikimedia Deutschland. And they, have, uh, they work together with uh, several non-Wikimedia organizations as well. And it's all, um, it's all paid for by a European grant uh, as well. And it's an umbrella project. That means that there are all kinds of different workshops uh, throughout uh, the countries, uh, including a workshop on Wikilas monuments. How do you upload images to Wikimedia Commons? Still, there is a very much need to get a long explanation about that because apparently it's not so easy. Surprise. Um, if you want to know more about that, then right now run out of this room and go to the Tavo room because um, they're talking about it right now. Uh, in content creation or collection, um, there's also a lot going on. In Sweden, um, it's, it's the right guy, by the way. The left guy is here, but it's about the right guy. <laughs> Both here, well, wonderful. Um, and they hired uh, a Wikipedian. It's not Wikipedia, sorry, the, the N fall away, fell away. Um, you cannot hire Wikipedia. Um, so what they did is they tried to get more content on the internet in Sweden. It sounds like a very vague subject, but you can probably imagine that there is all kinds of topics around that. There are uh, websites you can describe, you, there are protocols, there are all kind of weird stuff that I do not understand anyway. Um, and it works like a wiki project. The, uh, the person who is being paid for this is uh, trying to identify missing topics, to assess the quality of it, like it's a good article, it's a bad article. And they try to actually facilitate the community in writing articles more easily uh, than they otherwise would have to. So it's again not about sitting in the library and writing all the articles yourself. In Germany, and I think Matthias is working on that, he's sitting over here so you can uh, find him on that. Um, they have all these parliaments, they have all these states and all these states have their own parliament and every parliament has their members and this is one of these parliaments. So you can imagine how many parliamentarians there are in Germany. And every parliamentarian can have an article potentially. So what they did is they went to the parliament and they set up a booth and they tried to get the parliamentarians there and get a photo. And uh, I think they did it on federal level uh, one or two years ago. And they are, you never did it in the Bundestag? Not yet. Not yet, okay, coming up. Um, so they went to the, um, they, they basically have a photo session there, tried to get all the images. And um, in 2011 they did two of their uh, states so uh, many to follow. In Indonesia, I'm, I'm going to give you three writing contents there, so I'm not going very much into detail. 
um, they, have, they are really like the experts on writing contests within Wikimedia. And they have this, uh, for example, this writing contest, there is 2012, I picked the wrong logo, sorry for that, um, but it's very similar. Um, they gave the winner a trip to Gdansk, to Wikimania, and actually I think the winner is right now uh, involved in the chapter as well, so apparently that is a very good way to involve people. They had 10 universities participating, and they first gave them a training and then had the contest. So that way you know for sure that they can generate good content and they can move on and they can actually win something nice. Um, after that they had a, a contest with a very, very much a clear topic. So the first was not so much a topic, this is really topical. It's a two and a half month uh, contest, so much uh, a little bit shorter. And it was really on theology. It might sound like a boring topic to you, but if you're, apparently if you're studying it, it's uh, very interesting. They had some 70 participants from one university. And the third contest is still ongoing, uh, which is a seven month contest. So it's much, much longer. It's much more over a broad uh, period of time. And they were really targeting one language, the Javanese language, to really revive it. They, have, uh, they had a lot of, uh, relatively a lot of uh, editors uh, for their internet population, but uh, right now it's decreasing like the rest of the internet. So they are seeing if this is actually a way to uh, countermeasure that, uh, that trend and actually have these big workshops and explain to people how it works and, uh, make, and uh, make them participate in it. So who knows this is the future. The other project from the, um, from the British Museum residence uh, pers uh, person was the Hoxton Challenge. Uh, it's basically putting Wikipedians in a room, locking the door, and doing it the Vatican way. Don't give, oh, you gave them food, but maybe it would have, maybe that's a tip for next time. Don't give them any food until they finish the article. Um, and it's just writing articles about this box of material. Every single item there um, is interesting and uh, you can write about. So they gave them the, all the facilities, they gave them all the content, they gave them all the access to experts, and that way you can describe a topic like that uh, pretty thoroughly. Another way to, to gather content is not by writing stuff, but by making photos. And in the Philippines, they had this Wiki Takes event. There are several of them. Um, what they had is like 100 participants, which is like a huge number, a lot of non-Wikipedians as well, and they took the center of Manila. Um, they are using the photo contest tools, which are around. You can ask uh, uh, people from, that, uh, from the GLAM uh, more information about that. And uh, they are going, to, uh, there is, there's a related talk on that and other uh, Wiki takes events uh, to, on Saturday at 11 o'clock in the Rappaport, so that's over here. Another one happens in, um, in Poland, uh, which is a little bit different concept. Um, they have small groups of people, uh, 10, maybe 15 people. They go to a region which is covered not so well. Uh, like you see here, there are two teams, the red team and the blue team. And they are taking photos of their area and try to cover that very well in Wikipedia with photos. And uh, that actually gives thousands of images and it's really a good way because you have really motivated people uh, doing that. And in Israel they have already a long, uh, a long uh, series of trips into the country, uh, which is Elef Milim. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm sure there are... <laughs> yes. Um, so there are, this is already the 30th event um, of this type and they try to document an area, try to get more information. It's really interesting to do that because there's always someone who can tell you more about the places you are visiting. Um, so it, it, it's not a huge group but it's actually a quite nice group uh, so that you can c make a lot of content. So it's somewhere in between the other two examples. Um, there are a few, I'm, I'm getting to the end a bit, so um, there are a few multi-chapter uh, things. Iberocop, are there any people, I don't think so, right? No, no, no people from South America or... <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's a cooperation uh, of 12 organizations or uh, groups already so far. 
uh, of them, uh, I think three, four, five chapters already. They increase the number of chapters. They give, they give the chapters committee hell time because they are submitting so many bylaws. Six already. Ah, who keeps the count? Um, and they apparently give each other mental support when there are vegetarian meetings um, because they have a, a horrible time with that for some reason. They had in 2011, which is really interesting, they had their own chapters meeting, their own uh, Iberocop meeting in Argentina, in all in Spanish and Portuguese. You can speak the language you like, and the other ones will just have to make, have to make sure they understand you, um, and not in English. And that's actually a really interesting concept, because we are doing everything here in English, and, well, some people in Hebrew, but that doesn't mean that everybody's really uh, comfortable with that. Not everybody speaks as good English. Um, as James Forrester. <laughs> so, in Austria, they were trying um, to coordinate the, the money gathering of this organization. And um, 11 chapters in the foundation participated in that. Last year it was organized in Bristol, England. And, um, well, it, it's basically all about learning the, about the fundraiser, trying to prepare it, have discussions, have a lot of uh, fights with each other and, um, well, try to uh, move forward. And then there was Wikilas Monuments, um, which is a European contest, 15 countries. We just love monuments. And uh, in 2010, organized only in the Netherlands, this year um, covering all Europe, and who knows where we go next year. Um, if you want to know more about this, definitely visit the session on Saturday, 11 o'clock, in the Rappaport, also here. And there are a few pro uh, projects uh, outside all the other groups. For example, Wiki Portrait, also um, trying to target uh, to make uploading easier. Um, which I think the idea is to, to totally overthrow the system and make it uh, on the software side totally different. Uh, but the concept is really in interesting because you submit a photo and not only comes is hard because of the technical tools, it's also very hard because you have to write an email uh, I release this photo and I understand what a free license is, etc., etc. Um, just try to get your grandmother to do that. Um, that's very hard. So what we did is we tried to uh, target the, the famous people in the Netherlands um, to submit a photo uh, where they had the copyright on. And we would send them an email, do you agree to these terms? And they only had to send an email back like, yes, I agree. Make it a lot easier, but it's also a lot of work for Wikipedians. In Russia, they have been working on copyright lobbying, and they have actually been quite successful in it. Um, they have uh, currently the, the, the government, it's not possible legally to actually release something under a free license in Russia, which is a pain. Um, so they are changing the copyright law now anyway, and they have been able to get um, some of their proposed changes into the drafts which are in legislation right now. But also, it's part of the uh, G8 discussion. Harald, how much time do I have? About 15 minutes. Okay, then we still have time for discussion, good. Um, in Spain, they are working together with the ONSE Fundación, um, and they try to improve the accessibility of open knowledge projects for blind people. They develop tools for that, for example, a Braille search, um, and they try to uh, develop contents uh, for and about blind people. Uh, making it more easy for them to um, actually, well, use Wikimedia projects, but also other open source projects. It's something for a multi-year multi project, so don't expect, expect any results next month. But I think it's a really nice outlook to the future. And then there is some craziness going on here. Um, there are some projects which are just too big to actually, um, actually do. Uh, for example, Wikimania. Um, no single chapter can organize all by itself, so. And you can see the craziness if you, if you hear some of the organizers, some talking to each other, when they, they really are getting old, they have like tons of stuff to do. So sometimes they, um, they are embracing each other friendly. And uh, of course the other, the, the other crazy project, um, which I'm going to facilitate even a bit further here is the Association of Strobe Waffle Addicts. 
The strobe waffle is, is, um, is the, 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 the official food of Wikimedia, as uh, pronounced by Florence Devoir, the, the then chairman of the foundation, um, at Wikimania 2007. And still that has not been denied by the foundation, so it is the official food. <laughs> so of course for the uh, occasion, I have brought some strobe waffles. So I have some 40 with me, um, so I, I will get them after Matthias finished talking, because otherwise uh, it's going to be crazy. Um, and you can fight for them. I'll run away from the room. But be careful, because rope waffles can be dangerous and addictive. Um, so this is, yeah. So thanks a lot for all the people who submitted stuff. All these people in this, they submitted cool projects. They sent in uh, a little short description, and I think that's, uh, that's wonderful. So thank you for your attention, for your attention, and if you have any questions, if you have any questions, which I can imagine, uh, I would like to take some minutes for that, um, and possibly there are people in the room who can also answer it for you. We have ten minutes. So yeah, let's take a few. I'm not sure if someone can walk the microphone to the. But then you have another one. I have another one there. Okay. Okay, so all these slides, I will definitely put them on the Wikimania wiki um, and link them from the schedule. And from there, everyone can distribute it as much as they want because it's a free license. Anybody? But if you want, I can send also an email to Foundation L. Um, there are lots of cool projects here, and in your search for cool projects, um, did you come across failed projects? Like things that, oh, maybe one or two, you know, that, that, that didn't see the light of day, or for some reason or other just didn't go through? Because I think it's also interesting to see what didn't work. The problem here is that um, a lot of these uh, projects are actually very hard to find if you don't ask the chapters themselves. So what I did is I sent out an inquiry to all chapters and I asked them, please send me your coolest projects. The problem is if I ask them, please send me your failed projects, I'm afraid the number of responses would have been much lower. No, but I thought, you know, you being talkative and talking to people and stuff, maybe, you know, you would have... I, know. Uh, I have to limit myself. I only had, well, okay. it's, well, it's already a, much, a lot of content here. Anybody? Just probably some strobe bubbles. <laughs> One strobe bubble for every filled project? I'm afraid that's a bit tricky for the future. <laughs> they might encourage failure. <laughs> Okay, who, what, can, so, can people please tell me your favorite project from this, and not your own <laughs> chapter? Street Panel. Wikimania. Yeah, Street Panel. Street Panels. Street Panels. Yeah. The public domain concerts. Yeah. 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 I think Pavel had a question, or? Oh, Pavel. <clears throat> um, it's not so much a question but a comment um, regarding what Delphine just uh, mentioned. I think we should talk about failed projects. Um, I think it's important to uh, not only talk about successes and great stuff but also about the things that don't work uh, because uh, if something doesn't work um, you can learn a lot from it. So next time uh, maybe we should have a, a big presentation about the, our biggest failures. Uh, do I hear a volunteer there? <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of like, um, well, it's loud. Um, I, I think you do a great job of, of, I mean, just preparing this presentation. And also, I think uh, Wikimedia Netherlands does a great job of doing regular reports and sharing its knowledge. And I wonder if you could share uh, what underlies your motivation to do this and how you guys are continually able to share the results of your work and, um, and how you know what other chapters can learn from you in that regard of just being more open and transparent and making this knowledge available across the chapters ecosystem and across the movement as a whole. So I'd love to get a sense of like 
what underlies what you do, uh, how you, why you do this, and uh, and how you get it done every every pretty much every month. Um, well, thank you for the appreciation. Um, this is just, I mean, this is a one-time thing. I'm not going to do this again because it's a hell of a job. I've been working on this for two weeks, and just to read all these submissions, I had 90 submissions. Um, it's, it's a very hard job. Um, however, I did notice that as soon as you ask people for information, they really appreciate that, and they really are willing to share anything. Chapters I didn't talk to for two years, which I didn't hear from for two years. They suddenly started talking because you just ask questions. You just are interested, not because you, they have to be, they have to share the information, but because you want to know. And uh, I think that is the biggest trick for uh, getting people to share information. Tell them that you appreciate it. If you read a report and you think, hey, that's interesting, don't, don't say archive, but say answer and, hey, that's interesting, send. Um, how many chapters are there? How many members are there in all the chapters combined? And what are the three biggest challenges facing the chapters today? You have two hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think that could be the topic of a three-day chapters meeting. <laughs> but uh, the number of chapters is somewhere around 35 right now, uh, depending on the definition you keep. Um, the, um, the the the. The number of members is something that we don't keep really count of on an international level right now. Okay, so 3,000. Let's stay positive uh, because it decreases all the time. Um, well, we just got Wikimedia Mexico in there, so. It's, it, it, the challenges depend a lot on the chapters. Uh, I can very well imagine that Wikimedia Deutschland has slightly different challenges than Wikimedia South Africa, um, just because they are slightly different size. And um, Right now, one of our biggest challenges is communication. Um, just talk to each other, share information, um, but also talk, just so not just talk to each other, but also with each other. Already the first step is very hard, but you can imagine that communicating with each other is even harder learning from each other, learning from each other's mistakes, like Delphine suggested. It's something we are not doing well enough, and um, I think that is where we can make a lot of improvement. A uh, short advertisement. Uh, we in Poland uh, are printing books uh, as well based on uh, Wikipedia articles. Uh, we already printed a book about uh, Frederick Chopin and uh, right now the book about Marie Curie Skodowska is printing. And we bring you some books so I can give it for free. It's in Polish, English, Deutsch, Francais and uh, Russian. Okay, so if, you, I, I, if you're I've interested, got in if you want, if you're <laughs> interested in Chopin, please meet him. It was really fast. So just to emphasize once again, this is not a full overview of all the cool projects. There are many more out there. I know, for example, Wikimedia Deutschland has many of them. Wikimedia Polska has also several others. I had to limit myself. Okay, um, thank you. We don't have time for more questions. I think this lecture gave us great ideas to do each one in his local country. On the next speaker. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Uh, I want to introduce this one. Um, I didn't anticip anticipate uh, Lodovic to be um, finished in time, so thank you for. Um, your no, I'm going to take this one. While I'm switching the laptops, um, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Matthias Schindler. Uh, and thanks to the excellent air conditioning, I got a cold, so um, <laughs> I, I apologize for the, the slightly rusty voice I have right now. I'm going to talk about um, changing the world, a topic you are familiar with um, since 2001 at least. Thank you. Um, 
there was a subtitle, something like lobbying for Wikipedians or Wikimedians. Um, I personally don't really like the term lobbying, but um, in the end, that's what people um, should understand as a term. Um, you might fill in different words, but in the end, it boils down to lobbying. Um, here's the disclaimer slide. I'm not a lawyer. There are legal, legal matters discussed. These legal matters are, in many cases, highly specific to national um, situations. Um, they might differ in, in different countries. And this is actually about politics rather than, than law, but um, mentioning the law is un, uh, inevitable um, in this conversation. Um, here's, here's a sentence that some of us um, uh, should be familiar with. Um, it's the mission statement of the Wikimedia Foundation. And there's a line I would like to point your attention towards. Every single human being should be given um, the ability to freely share in the sum of all human knowledge. Every single human being. What does it take to reach this target? And there are some components to it, and you can uh, break them down. You can say, OK, there is technology involved. You need hardware, you need software that can handle a massive amount of um, write and, and read requests from a huge um, audience. You need internationalization, localization. You need uh, language support. I think um, you're familiar with this. Um, there's uh, right to left, left to right um, support required. That's a tricky thing. It moves down to accessibility um, support um, for alternative interfaces for editing and reading Wikipedia. There are projects. Um, some of um, them are run by um, chapters. And then it moves towards the internal policies of, of Wikipedia, where we define that Wikipedia should be encyclopedic in nature, that there should be a neutral point of view. These are things that help us to um, create an environment where um, Wikipedia is actually the place where people can um, fill in the sum of all human knowledge. Um, free licenses are going to help us to make this a permanent installation, so um, there is no risk um, that this content is going to disappear. Um, even if Wikipedia is gone, the content will be still there and someone else can pick up the work and continue. And of course, there's a code of conduct, something um, people tend to ignore sometimes, but um, I think there's a group that, um, focusing on um, friendly behavior too. And additionally, there, they are, there are the outreach projects trying to bring in more people. Um, these are all things required to create a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge and can share in um, his own piece of it. Um, but there's something missing. And it is the problem that um, a part of um, the human population lives in a country, lives in, lives in countries that deny freedom of speech, deny freedom of expression, where um, specific laws exist that would undermine individual ability to participate in Wikipedia. Um, they um, deter you from participation in open platforms because you are exposed to litigation, uh, you are exposed to legal risk, you are exposed to more subtle forms of um, attempts to, um, to, to bring you down, basically. Um, and of course, Wikipedia has been blocked before. Um, some of these countries call them um, connectivity issues. Some of them have uh, recently refined their mechanisms for denying access to Wikipedia. But this boils down to a scenario, a scenario in which Wikipedia is ready to receive content, but the, um, the people are unable to, to contribute to it. And this is where I believe that the mission statement of the Wikimedia Foundation and um, the, um, the mission statement of individual chapters um, allows us to, to spot a mandate um, in there, not just for creating new content, promoting um, these extremely cool projects that Lodewijk um, gave you some uh, insight about, but also to see are we able to, to change the legal landscape, are we able to, um, to contribute to um, um, an improvement in the situation of human rights, um, freedom of expression, freedom of the press, so that actually every single person on the planet can freely share in the sum of all human knowledge. 
you can start looking at um, possible lists of risks and threats against Wikipedia and exist in existence and um, the most obvious one people um, tend to mention when you ask them about what is endangering Wikipedia, um, they usually mention copyright. And the funny thing is that copyright isn't that much um, of a problem because right now Wikipedians deeply care for the existing um, copyright. They really do. and. Um, we aren't really exploiting much of the more fancier stuff like such as um, 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 I'm sorry um, um, fair use clauses in several countries um, that could be highly disputed and um, couldn't be executed in many countries. Um, there are some projects um, who do it on a local level, but um, the main projects of Wikipedia do not exercise um, the um, the fair use clause, except the English language Wikipedia, um, to a certain level. But there are little risks coming from the actual copyright um, area where Wikipedia could be um, running into an existential problem. Um, there are other issues um, that might affect Wikipedia much more deeply, um, sometimes as, a, a, as, a, as an unintended consequence um, when a legal measure is meant, aimed at um, a different um, issue. For example, privacy laws. Um, Facebook, other social networks have created um, a lively debate about protecting um, individual people from running into problems when they, um, when they um, release stuff about themselves, when someone else is releasing stuff about them, and Depending on how how bad you create a law trying to protect them, it will also affect um, Wikipedia. And the question is, um, is this something we can cover? Um, one scenario would be the kind of right to delete stuff. So, so um, if privacy activists are pushing towards laws that would allow people in social networks to to withdraw from the social network and demand the full deletion of all their stuff would it somehow could that somehow be interpreted as a right to delete stuff they contributed to Wikipedia um, and obviously if someone creates a Wikipedia article someone else is contributing to it um, it would be a theoretical risk um, if there was a legal uh, angle to to remove the original version um, and to force um, this kind of house of cards to fall down. This is um, an unlikely scenario. Um, it should be covered um, and it might only apply to personal user pages, which of course can be deleted. Um, and, Wikip and, and the media wiki software has a tradition of actually not asking um, that much questions. You can work in Wikipedia without uh, giving out any uh, information at all. He simply created a Wikipedia, um, a MediaWiki account, um, entering no information whatsoever, and then uh, not even the IP addresses are publicly visible, except for check user for some time. The next one is trickier, litigation shields. If Lodewijk eats too much strobe waffles, has a sugar flash, and starts entering weird things into Wikipedia, he might personally be exposed to, um, to legal consequences. So when he starts to insult king and queen um, and anyone else, that might be relevant to Dutch um, criminal law and he might be persecuted. If he insults his parents, his friends, his teachers, anyone else, um, they might have a case against him as well. But the question is, is this something Wikimedia Foundation should worry? And usually um, they are protected um, by, by litigation shields. So unless they are notified and unless they don't um, ignore incoming notifications about improper content on their website, um, there is no, um, no financial risk um, for them involved. However, th this is... Um, a situation 
um, that does not exist in many other countries. So if you are running Wikipedia in other countries, even if you are good behaving, even if you re um, react um, quickly and, and fast um, about incoming BLP violations, that still could um, trigger um, some liability on your behalf because you were the, the person um, providing the platform where the violation happened and you might be forced to make countermeasures and to, um, to sign declarations of non-infringement or declarations of um, non-continuation um, and these might be attached of um, bills from the, um, the lawyer side um, who came after you. Um, if Wikimedia Foundation loses its litigation shield for copyright violations, for um, BLP violations, that would be, <coughs> uh, to, in my assumption, a killer. Um, we can only hope that this insanity would never happen because um, a lot of uh, business models in the US are based on, um, on these shields, um, both in copyright and in, in privacy and, and, and personal law. And then there are strange debates happening um, usually in Europe, um, um, Portuguese um, socialists um, had been, there was a, a, a frenzy in the media about outlawing Creative Commons. Why? Um, these these um, Portuguese socialists spoke out against something called total buyout contracts. That means a writer is um, in, in a, uh, entering a contract with a publisher where he assigns um, exclusive rights um, of, for all rights of usage um, to the publisher. Um, there is uh, a debate about um, the kind of inherent unfairness um, in, in the relationship between publisher and, um, and, and journalist. And um, one proposed solution would be to outlaw to so-called total buyout contracts. It might be possible to interpret Creative Commons licenses as total buyout contracts as well, because in this case, um, you assign rights of usage to a third party or to basically everyone else um, for an unlimited amount of time um, for every place in the world without the ability to retract this license. So if um, a measure that was aimed against the exploitation of freelance journalists in the relation to publishers, um, it might somehow um, create a scenario in which Creative Commons um, might lose um, its basis. Um, we should be aware of this problem. Net neutrality, that's um, a topic um, for, for quite, quite a long time right now. It um, applies to the, the question that um, data is treated equally in the internet um, and internet service providers are not allowed to, um, to, to promote certain content over other content. It would be up to the individual user to, um, to decide um, what kind of content he requests. Um, the natural strategy is, uh, debate is quite complex. There are many sidearms in the discussion and it might create a scenario um, if things go really bad, that internet service providers um, will start to charge not their own customers, but also companies who want access to um, the ISP customers. This has been in a debate in, in um, many European states um, about preferred access, the, the removal of blocking, for example, certain services like Skype are blocked on mobile devices, not for technical reasons, but just for, because they threaten the, 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 the old-fashioned business model of um, combined contracts for data and, and telephone on your mobile phone. Natural technology could create a scenario in which we lose access to our audience because we couldn't afford um, um, paying the ISPs as well. Um, of course, Wikipedia would, would not be the first um, institution asked to pay. They would start with YouTube, they would start with uh, Google, of course, then they would move towards um, other publishers, TV stations, high volume um, um, websites, and they, it, it might trickle down to popular but um, um, smaller websites, even the non-commercial ones. There's a good reason, and there are more, many more arguments in favor of preserving net neutrality in the world.
and to strengthen um, the, the legal foundation for net neutrality. And then there are things that could happen that could affect us. Software patents is one. IBM has certain patents, software patents on um, features in, in wiki software. Um, IBM has um, been granted a patent for um, the manipulation of numbers um, in, in wikis through form formulas. So if you compare it to the um, extension that Tim Starling wrote about parser functions, this might overlap. Um, we can only hope that IBM remains friendly and will only use um, its patent portfolio for defensive matters, but who knows. Um, decency laws, blasphemy laws might affect us. Um, some of us um, have seen the debate about um, the, the Mohammed um, caricature on, on Wikipedia. Um, depending on how blasphemy laws um, um, are, um, are created in, in various parts of the world, it might prevent Wikipedia from dis discussing uh, certain topics in a neutral um, point of view way because we're no longer allowed to, to actually mention the fact that there is a, um, a cartoon that looks like this. Um, there is a trend towards the regulation of the internet. Um, some countries have started um, issuing licenses for um, TV station over uh, TV broadcasts over the internet. So um, if you are, um, if you have a website that features some kind of live audio stream and it has a capacity for more than 500 people in Germany, you are required to register. Um, this is the first step towards the. Um, the, the, the creation of a kind of internet where you get to have a permission first before you can um, start uh, your own website. This regulation is slowly starting. There are the controversies, there is resistance against it, but the trend is, is very strong. Um, Anti-boycott laws, um, this is a topic, um, for example, in Israel right now, um, shouldn't really affect us at first glance um, because of the neutra neutrality um, policy of Wikipedia. However, um, they have a chilling effect. They have a, a tendency to, to expand and anti-boycott laws and um, laws that um, are restrictive in, in, towards freedom of speech um, never stop at one point. Um, so it might be um, worrisome for Wikipedia too. Um, there is a weird debate going on in Germany about something they call Presseverleger Leistungsschutzrecht. Um, it's a sidearm of copyright law and um, what newspaper publishers basically want is that even if they put um, news articles online for free, free as in beer, they still want um, a a centralized agency for collecting royalties for people who read them and then make and, and then act um, in, in, a, in a business decision afterwards. So if an employee of a bank reads the, the economy section of a newspaper and doesn't have to, uh, to pay because there's no pay, uh, paywall and then later consults uh, with a client about investing in steel, um, it is the publisher's line of argumentation that he um, should pay the publisher uh, for, for this great information. Um, it's ridiculous, um, but um, unfortunately um, there is some support in the current coalition uh, in Germany uh, towards um, this kind of, of, of tax scheme. And there are mad people, um, uh, more mad people than I just mentioned, um, um, who, who litigate against uh, everything that moves. Um, some of them aren't that mad, but use more strategically. Um, it's called SLAP. Um, it's, it's a kind of um, arbitration against public participation, that may, or litigation against public participation. It means that um, they will just sue you in order to silence you. It doesn't, it, they don't even try to win in court. They just want to, to bind your resources to create a scenario in which um, the upfront cost for defending against um, such person um, will be prohibitive for, for further participation in, in debates. And of course, um, most Wikipedians um, 
I don't expect them to be able to afford a lengthy lawsuit um, if something like this arises, depending on the, on the jurisdiction. After these rather depressing slides, the, the obvious question is, are we doomed? And um, the, the answer is no, but uh, as you are Wikipedians, um, you, you would like to, to see some citation for, um, for this answer. And I'm going to present you three kind of theories, or I, I call them suggestions, and these are pretty much open for debate, and I, I would like to see opposition and comments and um, any kind of feedback from your side now and, and afterwards on these suggestions. And one, one idea is that Wikipedia itself already influences how current laws are interpreted and how future laws are crafted, because once it's obvious, lawmakers and their staff may actually read Wikipedia. Um, and obviously the way we present things um, has an influence in how um, people perceive the world as it is described in Wikipedia. You can tell this from examples from last year when there were um, certain bills introduced in, in various parliaments, state parliaments, that contained um, plagiarized content from Wikipedia. This is the kind of plagiarization that I n don't mind that much. Um, if, if a bill is introduced and, and, the, and, and the, the annex and the, um, um, the, the, the stuff, and when they discuss the law and, and the reason for it contains Wikipedia stuff, that's kind of cool. Um, um, again, it's still a violation of copyright in many cases, but, but still, cool. Uh, one, once you're at this point, um, it means that there is at least some impact of what you're doing, um, apart from the other stuff you're doing. When case law um, is in your country strong, it means that um, judges who rely on Wikipedia for checking facts, for um, referring to it, obviously it has an impact too. Um, there were some high-profile cases in the US where um, district courts um, referred to Wikipedia to, in, in a debate about the kind of um, warning level or terrorism warning threat level uh, thing and they just mentioned according to Wikipedia um, the the threat level has never dropped below elevated um, and it was about basically a civil rights lawsuit um, against this kind of hysteria so it was kind of helpful to have Wikipedia on hand of course there could have been other sources but um, Wikipedia came in handy and obviously the existence of Wikipedia um, helps to give people an understanding of what collaboration means, what the power of free licenses mean. So you, don't, you no longer talk about the, the theoretical aspect of uh, free license, but you can actually show them what effects there are and what um, um, people can do when content is available um, for everyone. I have to speed up a bit. A freedom not exercised is a freedom lost. Um, the way we deal with the, the legal questions arising from the question of um, um, reproductions of 2D um, public domain art, um, it helps to, to create a status quo in which um, the debate basically starts from our position, where um, reproductions of uh, 2D works of art are in the public domain, and then anyone else claiming otherwise has to prove it, not, other, not the other way around. So for us, it's, it's a much more comfortable downhill battle situation than it used to be um, a few years ago, um, when we talk about um, liberating stuff from, from clam institutions, or at least avoiding the, uh, the National Park Gallery in London from suing us. Second suggestion. The, the kind of um, free content and the, the, the meaning of free licenses does not align with the traditional front lines in, in, in copyright debate. Um, yes, Creative Commons is based on copyright, yet we somehow subvert certain core aspects of, of copyright, so we don't fit um, in, in either side. Um, Wikipedia is run by a non-profit charity, we are not um, um, a commercial entity, at the same time the, the content under free licenses can be used for commercial purposes, so no one ever has been able to, to put us in, a, in, a, in, in one side of the corner um, of traditional copyright debates. Um, and 
even if the entire world would be uh, a freely um, licensed world of, of news, of all this stuff, it would still be possible that a publisher pays a writer to create um, content that will be later put in, the, in, a, in a, a free license, but it would still be possible. Um, so it's not a doomsday scenario for writers, it's not a doomsday scenario for publishers who can be personated to use this kind of free content because they see free as in beer first and then they later realize that there is another freedom attached to it. Five minutes, right, I'm going to hurry up. Um, traditionally, um, the, the music and film industry of America and other organizations are perceived as powerful, as influential, um, but it, and this is, this is highly speculative, I, want, I really want your opposition on this one, but it's my impression that um, these organizations wouldn't survive the moment when copyright becomes a national debate. When copyright is discussed the same way as um, tax reform, as social security, as health as, as healthcare, um, at any other big topic um, in your national country, because these are so isolated groups that go beyond the desires and the requirements of most of the other um, parties involved, that they wouldn't um, be able to, to continue their, um, their holy war on, on restricting copyright. This is, I, I really want to, your opposition on this one, um, or um, some, some proof that um, it might be correct after all, and let's try and find out, um, would be the um, nice suggestion. Copyright becoming a national debate has happened last year, this year, the German um, Minister of Defense was found as, um, as having his uh, PhD thesis cut and pasted without uh, proper citation. Um, the internet jumped in and um, helped finding even more um, content from his PhD thesis um, plagiarized, and then he later resigned. And between um, the, the discovery and the resignation, there was a demonstration in Berlin. Several hundred people went to the Ministry of, of Defense and demanded his resignation. Um, and this was the time of the Arab Spring Revolution, however, so um, we, we took some symbols from Tahrir Square and, and, and Egypt and, and um, showed some shoes and, and uh, displayed our um, disapproval of the uh, Minister of Defense. And with only 800 to 1,000 demonstrators. This has been the largest demonstration in Germany so far about the topic of copyright. This is how low we start. There has never been a large demonstration about copyright before. And then you can say, okay, this demonstration wasn't about really about copyright, it was about um, scientific integrity and, and, and all this stuff. But look at in, the, in this image. There are people holding up signs, and these are quotations from the German copyright law. Um, paragraph 106, unauthorized explo uh, exploitation of copyright works. Have you ever seen a demonstration that people are holding up extracts from law on their, on their posters? I mean, this is amazing. Um, and it was fun too, and, and he resigned, and, and um, this was, uh, in many cases, for, uh, for many people, the first time they ever went to a demonstration like this. My presentation here is a call to arms for you. I want to, you to become involved. I want you to do the things that are relatively easy, that do have a high impact, and that help you to understand um, where more resources, may, where more work can be done, um, helping Wikipedia, helping like-minded organizations. And it's um, one thing is there's an M, M missing, uh, um, sending out questionnaires to politicians. That's a great thing because you don't have to show um, your own political op opinion. You, you simply ask questions and um, then you publish the results and then you keep a um, discussion um, uh, running. That has been working great. Um, we have done this um, three times by now and uh, we are improving, we are refining the questions and the, the methods for sending them out and receiving them. Um, hearings and consultations. Usually by law, um, governments are required to, to listen to um, 
to, to public input on, on legal matters. So ask your government, ask your, your ministries about um, hearings. Um, in many cases, there are, there are lobbyists on time, um, uh, on, on site, um, but actually um, it, it's pretty much open for anyone. You can go in, you don't have to say anything, you just can just listen to the debate and, and, um, and talk about it later. Um, find out what the consultations currently are in your country. There are ones from, uh, in the example of the European Union, the EU Commission conducts these things online, on-site, in Brussels. Um, they have um, reasonably good um, time frames for answering their questions. They sometimes uh, they, they maintain mailing lists, continuing to ask them. Um, it has worked so far quite well, and they uh, usually at least they read your statements and they sometimes even um, include them in um, the, the, the further um, reasoning on, on their um, legislative, legislative efforts. You can talk to parliament uh, and parliamentarians and this one I want to applaud Wikimedia Israel for the, the Wikipedia law kind of initiative, um, um, putting Israel government material in the public domain, alliances, this is important. Don't just stick to the crowd of people um, you always stick to. Electronic Frontier Foundation, Free Software Foundation, they are nice people, but half of them are you anyway. So um, you, you might look for organizations outside um, what you usually do. Taxpayers Union, they are against waste in, in government. So um, I'm, I'm quite confident that most of the taxpayers unions uh, would be supportive of the government releasing material under free licenses if they knew about the issue. Trade unions. Humanitarian re relief organizations, they are aware of um, the implications of the lack of information in developing countries. Um, they would love to speak to you about um, bringing knowledge, bringing access to the information, um, fulfilling Wikimedia Foundation's goal um, on, their, on their set of, of um, possible actions. And then um, there's the minus five minutes for debate now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions? Yeah, there's one. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Matthias, for the presentation. Uh, I have a question. Uh, it is under my impression that uh, uh, Wikimedia Foundation and chapters have always uh, avoided to take uh, political stances on some subjects, such as net neutrality that you mentioned, uh, or software patterns, for that matter. Uh, we, we we have public positions on copyright, but not on net neutrality. So do you think we should actively uh, take stands that we support net neutrality or? Um, we, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't support individual candidates or parties, but we should um, support certain um, issues that we deeply care about. And as far as I know, the Wikimedia Foundation has been slowly shifting to a more active position. They have been um, signing an um, amicus brief in a, in a um, legal matter about public domain in the US. So this is a kind of positioning um, in, in the public sphere, in, in, and I applaud that. And um, you might consider um, asking, is this a job better suited for chapters than for the Wikimedia Foundation? Um, wouldn't it be great if there was an American chapter uh, who could weigh into American debates such as net neutrality and so on? But um, eventually, yes, um, we, we should abandon the complete neutrality in all issues. At the same time, we should uh, acknowledge the fact that the Wikipedians um, themselves um, should cover basically every available position on in every issue, and we would con love to continue to have this. Um, you should, should still be able to participate in Wikipedia, even if you are opposed to net neutrality. That's a um, kind of obvious thing. Um, right now, uh, most of the copyrights law are, of course, national, and uh, they are turning more and more into international negotiations, into right. uh, multi-country uh, uh, contracts, basically agreements. Um, do you see here a need for international cooperation between the different organizations or is this more something that every country should do by itself? Both. Um, no, um, you are correct. Um, copyright legislation in, in Europe is mostly done by the EU Commission these days. 
there are, there's some room left for the implementation uh, on the national level, um, but it would make sense for European chapters to at least talk to each other about um, upcoming EU legis legislative efforts um, in certain topics, such as the orphan works um, debate that is right now going on. At the same time, the Ministry of Justice in Germany has asked us, as Wikimedia Germany, on our opinion on the EU legislative effort on orphan works. So it doesn't rule out um, both things in the same time. Um, the only constraint might be the capacity to answer to them um, in, in time um, on behalf of your chapter. But um, eventually, um, we would require skills um, to, to cooperate ourselves on, on higher levels than just the national level. You mentioned as a topic for debate the mafia <laughs> and especially the vast media interests. Well, I think we should not particularly look at America because there are also vested European media interests. And I have uh, uh, seen in reality that they have a very well organized lobbying effort. You don't see so much of it because it's not in the open generally. So it's therefore very important the work that you are doing in contacting the, your government. But it's also very important that we do it everywhere in Europe. Because in the end, the, legisla the important legislation will be made in Brussels. So we should unite and we should be aware that if we do not take part in these decisions, decisions will be taken for us. I absolutely agree. And, and additionally, I think we should help to drag the debate into the public where the sunlight usually um, clears up some things. Um, when, you, when you take part in um, on-site consultations in Brussels, you are sometimes dismayed by the low quality of their argument. If they made these statements in public, they, it, it would be a, a, a bloodbath, basically. Um, the, especially some of the, the French uh, lobbyists, when, when they speak about um, what they consider the kind of evil free thing, they don't differentiate between free as in beer and free as in speech. Um, it's, it's like they never seen this thing before and, and then they would uh, look completely ridiculous the moment um, this would be a public statement. So it, it dragged them to the sunlight um, and they just will fall apart. Um. <laughs> okay. There will be, there will be, uh, there were some um, a, a lobbying, a copyright lobbying uh, meeting in the past. Um, what do you think or know about the, the future of these uh, meetings or the other success of these meetings? Um, I think Wikimedia Germany was represented on this meeting of, by, by um, our um, deputy um, uh, president. Um, um, this should under, under, underline the, the importance um, we consider to this topic. And yes, um, we, should, we should use the kind of meetings we do have anyway, such as chapter meetings and even Wikimania um, for, for continuous dialogue on, on these issues. And of course, the electronic means, which we seem to be using anyway. Um, yes, but, but doing something in person always helps. Um, um, the, the more the better, P please do something. Um, some, somebody help, somebody help. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, uh, we should let the next people come in if they want five minutes early so they can prepare the presentation. Uh, here it will be the call for participation for new users, for those who want to stay. And uh, for, that, for others, you have a break of five minutes. Yeah, and Charles Waffles. <laughs>